Well, we have a great day here today. It's cold, but look at that sun. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. You can see the cows all out there. Uh, we got them on dry ground. There were some puddles here, but I don't think the puddles are, are gonna be here too long because it's, uh, it's freezing. <laughs> And it's only going to get colder, so just something for us to uh, prepare for. That's, that's again, I always say with farming, that's all you do is prepare. So if you're a, a type A person uh, who needs a schedule and a plan and organized, you know, farming may be, it may be for you. Um, but the other day, uh, we had these Amish guys come here and they did an amazing job. We're, we're starting to fix a lot of the structures outside. Um, you know, a lot of things, you know, with farming, it's tough, right? Cause you want to fix everything. You want to beautify everything. And you got to remember that a, it's a farm and B you only have so much time. So you can only do so much and you know, you really got to make sure the animals are first. They're number one. So with whatever time you have left over, that's when you focus on, on the other things. So, you know, for us, we got the meat business, right? We got to focus on getting our customers their meat at wearefreedomfarms.com. We gotta focus on the animals, and then we gotta focus on the structures. We gotta make sure we're maintaining all the equipment. And you know, you gotta make sure you get your feed coming, you gotta make sure you got your hay, you got enough of it to get you through the season. So it's just constant planning. And that's, and that's what we do. So um, like we got a pile of sand because our dairy cows were kind of slipping as they were getting up. So we got a big pile of sand. We got a pile of rock we've been spreading. We got these big three inch stones. So the tractor could compress those down and we could reduce mud. But um, we, uh, we're working on the barn now. So we got to decide what we're going to do. These Amish guys did an amazing job. They finished this in like three hours. So one of the things I want to do is I want to get this whole barn redone, you know, cosmetically over time. And then we got to decide what we're going to do. Are we going to paint that white? We're going to paint that red, put a logo up there. Uh, all, all big decisions. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Those are, those are our small decisions, but watching these guys work and I wish I had it on video. They're going to come back and we're actually replacing the entire barn floor next with two inch hardwood. It's going to be pretty cool. But they did an amazing job um, on, on this, you know, cutting the angles and just it was amazing how fast they, they milled the, their wood um, at their, at their uh, you know, at their farm. So we said, you know what, who better to hire to fix a barn than the Amish? And they did an amazing job. And then we said, you know what, who better to help us? Uh, we're going to build a, they're going to come here, they're going to build a corral, they're going to re... Uh, repair and fix this uh, sort of big run-in shed over here that was once used for cows and we use it for pigs now so uh, we're just gonna really start utilizing uh, experts <laughs> at what they do to help us with things and I know that goes against a lot of what the, I guess the typical thought process of many farmers because farmers are very handy people and uh, they can do a lot of things and they're very talented but we can't do everything we just don't have the time and as much as we want to do everything we can't so do we just let it sit and you know stay the way it is or do we bring in help and work a little bit harder to to compensate people for their talents but this this run-in shed has been driving me crazy for a long time. It was nice when, when we started, but when we put the pigs in here, they started rubbing and they started uh, sort of pushing that metal in a direction that we didn't want it to go. So it looks a little bit shabby, but uh, yeah. So it was pretty cool to watch these guys work and just let their talent take over. And, you know, I, I usually come on here and, and I talk about the farm and I always like to give uh, a couple lessons as well, you know, it's the coach in me, but one of the lessons that I've had to learn through the years is that you can't do everything yourself, right? Uh, sometimes our appraisal of ourselves is pretty high, you know, we can do all things, but there's things that we can do 
and we could do a good job and there's things that other people could do and they can do a great job. So you got to know what your things are and you got to focus on the things that you're really good at. And for me, one of the things I love to do is introduce people to, uh, to taking a shot on farming, right? To, to make farming cool again. That's one of our t-shirts that we sell on the website. But um, introduce more people to, to farming, getting them, getting them involved. And, you know, us here, we're obviously very pro-America, pro-farming. And we want to make sure that these farms are, are maintaining themselves and they're, uh, you know, continuing to be run um, the way they should be and uh, that they're run accordingly uh, by American farmers and that uh, our land is not being uh, taken over by foreign entities. And the only way we could prevent that, right, is by getting people involved with farming, getting back out on the land. I know that's one of uh, Greg Judy's big things, you know, Greg's somebody that we look up to here and um, get people out on the land again. You know, I know my worst days are when I'm on that computer or I'm spending too much time on this stupid phone and not outside. You know, Lauren and I last night, we went into the barn and spent a good 30, 40 minutes with the animals and um, it was fantastic just uh relaxing and you know they don't have a care in the world those those beauties um i'll tell you why i'm walking this way i see birds over there and i don't like the birds that i see because sometimes those are what i call death birds and they find their way to an animal that's down. So the other night we had some harsh weather and I gotta make sure right now <clears throat> that there's not a cow that went down over there. And anyway, this is one of the things, like I said, planning, there's also things you have to worry about, but uh, you got to keep your eyes open at all times and I don't like what I am seeing right now so uh, it goes back to this daily battle that we have in taking care of the taking care of the herd and making sure everybody's on the up and up but winter is an absolute beast up here and it is a freaking killer but I have a bad feeling about what I'm about to go see and uh, I'm not happy about it. And I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. But we had the herd here the last couple days. And uh, I don't know. Something might have happened during the storm the other night. And again, this, this one age group is killing us. And I had the vet here and we were talking about it with him. And he's like, listen, this group is your most vulnerable group for so many reasons you know once they wean off that mama and they're exposed to you know um temperature and such hold on hang with me uh anything could happen so it's just one of those things and uh, uh it's horrible like i said i don't know what i'm gonna see and you don't either because you're coming for a walk with me but uh this channel's not meant to be graphic. It's just meant to be real and give the uh, full Monty of farming. And uh, uh, it's horrible. <laughs> but anyway, um, the thing that I guess keeps us coming back is that uh, there's great reward, right? In, in feeding America and feeding our region and giving them good quality food, but uh, it's hard. You know, what I've noticed about this region that we're in is it's great for dairy cattle because they're spending most of their time in the barn and this, this area is very strong for, for dairy cattle and the dairy farmers do a fantastic job 
up here. Um, but beef and pigs, what we raise, I always say at times, I feel like it's, uh, it's easier in other areas. Not, well, it's never easier, but it's, uh, there's less to contend with and I don't even have my boots on. And this is like mud and ice and crap. So anyway, it's not looking good here from what I can see. <sighs> Looks like a calf is down and uh, the hawks are, have already gotten to it and it's not going to be a good day. So with that said, um, I got to go take care of business here. So we will uh, catch up another time. This was not uh, this was not a planned video. This was supposed to be a motivational video today. But anyway, I will uh, be in touch, and we'll see y'all soon. Have a great day. I got to take care of this here, and it's sort of the crappy part of, of farming. So I'll talk to everybody soon. Have a great day. Have a great night. Have a great life, and we will uh, we will be in touch. See ya. All right, well, just real quick, as I'm retreating now, just give you an update. Yeah, it didn't go too good with that calf. Again, another young one. Uh, not, not just not a good, not a good, uh, not a good thing. So that's our update. No good. And uh, again, it's this time of year. It's the same age group. Um, and as we were talking to the vet the other day, we talked about just segmenting everything out and maybe creating a whole weaning area that uh, puts our young six to 12 month old uh, calves in a safer uh, in a safer environment. So anyway, we're gonna work on that on our end. But again, this happens. We're very active with our with our veterinary team. And uh, you know, we've done fecal tests. And uh, you know, they just said, look, this is an age group that is extremely vulnerable in these variable temperatures. And the tough part for us is that it's only gonna get colder next week. We're looking at highs of 23 and lows of 13. And, we're just hoping the wind doesn't kick on. So that's the update. Ah, better news will be coming. We'll make sure of that.